Dear summer school participants, uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's uh, program. Uh, before my words, I would like to thank all the organizers uh, uh, of such a great and uh, beneficial summer school. Uh, we have two uh, sessions uh, today that uh, I will moderate. Uh, in the first one, in the first session, uh, Mrs. Natalina Naibaho uh, will present us the country report of Indonesia. Uh, then we have a 15 minute uh, question and uh, answers process. Uh, in the second uh, session uh, after the break, uh, Mrs. Alexandra Dianoska Tranda Filova. Uh, excuse me for my pr uh, pronunciation of uh, your name, if I pronounce wrong. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Trenda Filova uh, in the second session uh, present, will present us the country report of Macedonia. Then uh, also we have a question and uh, answer process again of uh, 15 minutes. Uh, now I would like to uh, leave the floor to Ms. Naibaho. Ms. Naibaho, uh, are you ready? Are you here? Can you yeah, hear? I'm here. Sure, I'm here. Okay, uh, welcome, uh, Mrs. Naibaho. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, you have the floor and you have 30 minutes uh, for your presentation. Please. Thank you so much, Dr. Buhari. Uh, please excuse me to share my screen. Greetings all participants of the uh, summer school. And I would like to thank you so much for the organizing committee who gave me a, a chance to share my uh, presentation regarding Indonesia uh, report on domestic violence and also for uh, violence against women and I, I hope that we can discuss uh, uh, about the issue that arise uh, in domestic violence and also the uh, violence against uh, women. And again, my name is Natalina Naibaho. I am a permanent lecturer in the Faculty of Law, Universitas Indonesia in Indonesia, and I uh, the member of Criminal Department and also the uh, Human Rights Center member. Thank you. I think it's just, just a short introduction, and you can contact me through my email. I will. All right then. I will start with an introduction that domestic violence and violence against women and in Indonesia, precisely sexual violence, shows a very high incidence rate in Indonesia. Uh, moreover, in a pandemic uh, season right now, in order to answer the question of legal protection and how is the legal protection, uh, legal institu institution in Indonesia, uh, as well the law enforcement institution uh, to give uh, proper protection for the victim in sexual violence cases in Indonesia and how to overcome the obstacles of law enforcement. Uh, this presentation uh, I prepare by using this review and also uh, using data uh, with the short interview with the uh, resource person and NGO that advocate for the victims and uh, as a conclude to my uh, research extension, I also do comparative, and uh, but I didn't uh, present uh, Thailand and Philippines the comparative in uh, this occasion, but it's part of my research. And the results show that all types of violence experienced within Indonesia territory cause the most suffering to the victim, especially causing them physical and psychological suffering. And moreover, victims are usually subjected to sexual violence. Ironically, the victim who suffer from multiple victimization, so they not only become the victim of the uh, crime itself, but also from the criminal justice system, the process uh, for them to get the, uh, the, the rights and also to get the justice for what happened with them were unfortunately cover up within the family. So there will be a cultural and also a religious background uh, surrounded with uh, domestic violence cases uh, and causes an unfair situation for the victim. Therefore, due to the factual condition, it is necessary to change first the paradigm 
from the victim themselves, the society and the enforcement officer for the best interest for the victim, especially in Indonesia. And I will uh, give you the, the brief from Indonesia Comfort Report. Uh, the methodology that I, I use is online desk review, of course. As a complementary data, I did informal interview and discussion with distance person who has expert and advocate victims. Uh, fortunately, uh, I, I did the research uh, around two weeks since uh, the organizing committee called me, uh, sent me email. And the periodic of uh, the research is about uh, the last five years, uh, and also including the pre-pandemic and during pandemic of COVID-19. And the organizing committee uh, also sent me the research guidelines as, as a question list prepared by the OC that I need to answer as part of my uh, presentation. And the collecting data, I collect data from various data from official institution, from the police, prosecutor, attorney general office, Supreme Court, Minister of Women Empowerment and Children Protection in Indonesia. Oh, sorry for the typo, this is NGO. And uh, unfortunately, very sad to say, there is no integrated data uh, from uh, the various uh, stakeholders. And Indonesia, unfortunately, uh, it's not the party of Istanbul Convention, not yet, I hope. But fortunately, we had ratified CEDAW uh, in the year 1984. And we also established law of child protection in 2002, year 2002. And we also uh, keep going uh, in amendment, uh, the, the law of child protection law. Uh, and the last uh, amendment is in the year of 2016, uh, including the aggravating sanction for certain type of violence. For example, we add the double track system uh, sanction, like semi castration for uh, adult uh, perpetrator defender that repeatedly uh, uh, joined the criminal, for example, uh, did the, the rape for a child more than uh, one time. So they regard it as a recidive. And we also have uh, established a uh, law on elimination of violence in household. We call it as anti-domestic violence law in 2004. And for now on, uh, we have the bill of combating sexual violence. So it's still a, a draft, the draft. Uh, in the in the legislative process, and for the legal instruments that uh, established in Indonesia, we have the Indonesia Criminal Procedure Code, and we also have the uh, Indonesia Criminal Law Code. So we have various legal instruments in addition to give a uh, proper protection and also the ultimate protection for the rights of the victim. And victims of crime as an issue are rarely given the spotlight. I think it's not only happened in Indonesia, but most of the Asian country. One example is that explicit regulation only exists in regard to the rights of suspects and defendants in our criminal law procedure. The rights of the victim are only regulated previously in law number 13, years 2006, as amended by law number 31, year 2014, regarding protection of witnesses and victim. We call it as a witness and victim protection law. Honest, uh, honestly, this is rather uh, ironic given the lengthy time span between the issuance of the witness and victim protection law, uh, namely in the year of 2006, which was later amended in 2014, and the Indonesia Criminal Procedure Code that has ex existed since 1981. So there is a gap, year gap, between our first uh, Indonesia Criminal Procedure Code uh, previously, our perspective is about uh, backward looking 
and also uh, it's uh, now changes uh, have a have a good sense of giving protection to the victim because we are uh, change our paradigm into forward looking uh, in the protection of the victim. So we are not only uh, give protection to the defendant, to the suspect, but also for the victim and their families, their family members. Based on Article 50 until Article 68 of the Indonesia Criminal uh, Law Procedure, especially in Chapter 6 on Suspect and Defendants, as a note, the position of the victim is not explicitly regulated in the criminal procedure. As the proposer, purpose of establishing the uh, Indonesia Criminal Procedure Code is to protect suspect and defendant who, because of their position in the criminal justice system, make them vulnerable because they need to face uh, the police, the uh, prosecutor, and also judges. And if they convicted, and they uh, they found guilty and sent to the prison or become inmates of the corre uh, correctional institution. So their status it uh, become vulnerable in the uh, uh, correctional institution or in the jail. So uh, in this situation in the criminal justice system, make them uh, the suspect or, or the defendant uh, looks vulnerable and. Uh, uh, it is possible for all the uh, uh, law enforcement officer to file it of, uh, to, do, to do violation of your rights. And protection of the criminal procedure code is given to the victim who are also witness, so that the provision and guarantees of protection are given to victims who are also witnesses in every criminal justice process. And from uh, the legal instrument that established in Indonesia, we can see that since it started since the year of 2006, this is the uh, like uh, a groundbreaking, like the breakthrough in criminal justice system to give more protection to the victim. And I will start again from the terms and definition. Is there any uh, definition, the correct definition, or the uh, clear explanation for the terms of domestic violence, violence against women? So in Indonesia, we use several terms in several laws. So we have uh, more than one laws to protect a victim of domestic violence and violence against women, you can find it in the, our legal instruments, such as in the, our criminal, uh, criminal code uh, established in 1946, and also in uh, child protection law and the anti-domestic uh, violence law. So it will be uh, a statute uh, stated separately and uh, what we need now is uh, we hope there is an integrity, integrated uh, law that can be used to protect all the victims since the uh, start of the criminal uh, process until uh, the end of the criminal law process. We recognize the definition of domestic violence or violence in household. Uh, is any act against anyone, particularly women. So the, the center of uh, the law itself is to protect women, uh, not only the adult, but also the child, bringing about physical, sexual, psychological, misery or suffering and or negligence. So it's include, include negligence of the domestic uh, sphere including threat to commit act, forcing or seizure of freedom in a manner against the law within the scope of, of household. So we, we use the term of household uh, rather than uh, domestic, because in Indonesia term, we call it as a rumah tangga, house and the stairs. So it's a, a bit difficult to uh, translate in English. 
And the second, how about the violence against women? Any violence of human rights and the form of discrimination against women and shall mean all acts of gender-based violence that result in or are likely to result in physical, sexual, physical, legal, or economic harm or suffering to women, including threats of such act, uh, like, for example, coercion of physical, uh, uh, physical, and also sexual violence or negligence. So if I compare this term and definition to the Istanbul Convention, uh, we have a very limited elements of crime, but in Istanbul Convention is more wider. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the challenges maybe in the, in the uh, uh, conviction and the bring it to the court and give evidence to prove every element according to the criminal law procedure. The principles uh, of the protection of uh, victim in the domestic violence is also a uh, victim of violence against women are respect for human rights is a basic rights. Uh, the freedom is a basic rights. Uh, justice and gender equality. So we also uh, accept the gender uh, terms and uh, equality among gender and also non-discrimination based on race and economic status, religious and other any uh, circumstance. And the last one is about recognition of victim protection. So from the terms and definition, we have a similar uh, explanation uh, with Istanbul uh, Convention, but a bit limited and also with other uh, international uh, instrument on law and human rights regarding protection of the victim of domestic violence and violence against women. I will continue. I will uh, cite from Sparks uh, and I will uh, uh, explain a bit more uh, uh, the application uh, of this uh, situation uh, in Indonesia in the in the uh, factual cases. Uh, six ways, uh, Spark uh, stated six ways to uh, protect the victims uh, and six ways with the action attribute of social situation of the victims that can help explain variation in the level of victimization. Uh, first, precipitation facilitation, vulnerability, opportunity, attractiveness, uh, and impunity. In cases that have been uh, analysis and research based on the court institution, there are three ways to explain the uh, multiple victimization for a person who not only become the victim of domestic violence or violence against human, uh, women, but they uh, happen, it happened to them uh, multiple times. Uh, so they are be be become the victim and victim again and victimized again and victimized again. And they also become the victim of criminal justice system. For example, if a person become a victim of a domestic violence, so uh, it could be happen in uh, such a ways, for example, uh, her uh, herself uh, report to the police or the neighbors or uh, the other members of the family give report to the police. And the, in the police station, the police uh, will ask you some questions re regarding your report. And the person that you met in the police station, in the police office, is not, uh, not a guarantee that uh, the person will be women or have a, a, a women protection a paradigm of victim protection perspective. So it depends on uh, the, the, the police, the situation of the police, the, the police office, the police station. Uh, luckily, if uh, you become the, 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 uh, the member of the big cities as a citizen of the big cities, for example, in Jakarta, how if you become uh, the community from the outside 
uh, the border or the very rural area. It will be uh, a problem also. You can be very vulnerable with the question from the police officer. Uh, that's the thing. And after that, you can call again and again to uh, prepare the a good report from the police, and you can also ask to, to get the FISM uh, from the hospital, uh, respective uh, uh, hospital, not only for the organ or the body that become the uh, uh, severe of the rape, but also uh, the situation of, of your psychology uh, condition, your mental health. They also ask for that. And the other things, and uh, if the trial happens and, uh, and finally they bring your case to the criminal justice system and you need to uh, show, off, uh, show up in the uh, trial in the court, uh, the problem is you, you could be uh, questioning many times uh, during the trial and it could be uh, difficult for you to tell the story again and again and again. And you, you need to meet the perpetrator, meet the family of the perpetrator or the friends of the perpetrator. It's a very hard condition for the victim to tell the story. Not only the victim is a female, but also male. And uh, especially also for the children. It's very difficult for them to, to fulfill the requirement as a victim to participate in the process. And after that, uh, the thing is, if the judges finally uh, give the perpetrator punishment, you, you might ask about the uh, justice for yourself. Uh, how about if the judges look up the, uh, uh, the document and hear the witness and uh, hear uh, here are all the explanation from the uh, perpetrator and finally uh, give uh, two years imprisonment for the perpetrator. And as uh, the victim, you, you feel that it's really injustice, injustice, not, not give a, any, any uh, fairness for me. There is also a, a, a different problem. And after the person, the perpetrator uh, release from the correctional institution, released from the prison, what happened uh, with you and with uh, uh, the uh, ex-inmates? Uh, how is the re relationship among you? Uh, especially if the perpetrator is part of the family, uh, uh, happened in the domestic uh, sphere, it will be another issue. So a person could be become the multiple uh, the victim of, uh, of um, multiple crimes and uh, plus uh, the uh, the victim of the uh, uh, the process of criminal uh, law uh, the vulnerability victims are included in a group that is vulnerable to crime because they are biologically and socially weak uh, there is a story in the central uh, of Jakarta, uh, a kid, a girl, um, uh, she is now uh, 12, uh, 13 years old and uh, repeatedly raped by the boyfriend and also by the uncle and the step stepbrother many times. The, the, so the situation is very vulnerable because uh, the mother and the father, uh, the parents, uh, was divorced. So uh, the girl was put uh, under 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 uh, supervision under under guard of the uh, of the father. So it's a, a bit a bit risky for the girl to continue the life. And the second is about opportunity. Sexual violence can continue because there is an opportunity for the perpetrator to, to commit your action. Like the girl uh, that the case happened in the center of Jakarta, because uh, uh, the father need to walk uh, outside the city and there is an opportunity for the boyfriend, for the uncle, and also for the step, step brother to uh, repeatedly rape her 
uh, 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 join the sexual harassment. In general, opportunities arise when the perpetrator and the victim are alone at home. So it's a bit difficult when the victim mothers or uh, other family members are away. That's uh, uh, other challenging. And the last thing is impunity. Limited access to protection and law enforcement make victims easy, become the easy targeted for the repeat crimes uh, because there may be lack of education, lack of money, and lack of access. So the access to justice is also important from, uh, for the victim and their family. From the case analysis, uh, I found out that uh, there is impunity is influenced by factor from within the victim uh, themselves and factor from outside the victim. It doesn't mean that we blame the victim. No, they are already severe. They are already uh, uh, in the uh, hard situation, a very, a very difficult situation. So, but sometimes if, uh, we, we call this situation as um, uh, unspeakable crime. Uh, a domestic issue, and if uh, the person, the victim, raised in the very patriarchy or non-democratic situation of the family, it's a bit difficult for them to voice, to give voice to what happened to them, to the crime that happened to them. I will show you uh, cases uh, in Indonesia. It will be happen not only in Jakarta, in the capital city of Indonesia, but also in other region in Indonesia. The fir uh, first uh, example is uh, uh, what happened in school student in Kupang in East Nusa Tenggara, who was repeatedly raped by her own biological father until she pregnant. It's only one case. We still have another case that's very sad just to hear and to know. But I think uh, to show you the case that uh, happened around us, give you awareness, not only to protect yourself, but also your siblings, maybe your neighbor and anyone, uh, your relatives and anyone that you may know or as uh, your circle. And I also have a factual case, a student in the university uh, become victim of sexual harassment uh, from the uh, teacher, yeah, the teacher, and uh, also the seniors or by teacher or seniors or become the victim of rape from the religious leader, or uh, we could say that the, uh, uh, the leader of the village, it could, it could happen. One of the very sad story is about uh, a student who has been raped by the religious leader and he is trying to, uh, is trying to uh, report, excuse me, what happened, okay. So he's trying to report to, I, will, I think I will stop screen. And I will share it again. Very sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Okay, I think I need to, because I need to open again. Very sorry, Dr. Buhari. I need to share again my okay. That is okay. I will continue. I think it's already uh, in your screen. We, 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 we cannot see your presentation on the screen. It's gone. And okay, I will try. Uh, we try again to reshare. You, you, you are the host, Natalina. You can share your screen. With yeah, sure, sure. But I need to. I think I need to close. I need to close a bit. Mm. Doesn't matter. We, we, we are waiting. Yeah. Very sorry for this. Okay. Uh, but precisely, you you uh, you see my screen, right, Doctor Buhari? No, we 
cannot still see your screen on this, uh, see your uh, presentation on the screen. Device cannot see also. All right then. Hopefully it works by now. How about now? Yes, it's done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I will continue. Uh, one of uh, the students in the university and the colleague uh, tried to uh, commit suicide. Uh, he need, she needed to jump into the lake in the university because uh, she became a, a, a bipolar, uh, have a mental health issue. Uh, uh, she has a history become the victim, uh, the rape victim of religious leader. And when uh, she was trying to uh, give a voice to the parents and the parents say, you, you might be lying. So it start from the family that didn't believe uh, from what happened in the, uh, in the victims. And the other case is uh, a father sexually abused his daughter from when she was little. So it's really the case of domestic violence in the, uh, in the, from the court decision uh, happened in 2017 and also happened in 2013. This is the uh, real case in Indonesia. The mother, uh, this is very, very pity, very sad. The mother who knew about the incident just to ignore or just keep silence and even told the child who was the victim to be quiet and severe and serve the father still. So it's a very a dangerous situation. Uh, and this green light, uh, they call this a green light from the mother, then paved the way for the father to continue, repeatedly uh, continue to be violent for years. And what happened in, uh, in the decision of the court, there were difference in the attitudes of the family members and the laws or article that apply and the difference in judges verdicts or the judges decision. So that will be also disparity in sentencing and also disparity in how the criminal justice system uh, treat the victim and the factual cases. It is these differences that are worth uh, dealt into more deeply until finally a solution can be found to provide comprehensive legal protection for victims of domestic sexual violence. Uh, maybe you already know that Indonesia is so big, so huge. Uh, so there, there, there will be uh, uh, differences, the competence and the capability from the law enforcement uh, officer from uh, place to place. So it will be uh, like this, the, the person who become uh, judges in central Jakarta, they might be have a, a very high quality rather than uh, the person become a judges in the very rural area in very far away from Jakarta. So uh, the homework from, for the uh, Supreme Court in Indonesia is to give them uh, like uh, equality or uh, uh, similar competence even though they, they be assigned in the uh, uh, big city or in the small city. This is a situation, uh, the impact of unbalanced power and control in domestic sphere that leads to criminal act. Uh, uh, I found that uh, the barrier of cultural and religious paradigm in Indonesia, because in our life, uh, we recognize uh, uh, around six to seven uh, religions and we also uh, need to adapt and live with the cultural. We have uh, so many uh, cultural background and we have so many rules that we need to follow and a, a part of that is a patriarchy paradigm in our, uh, in our uh, life, in our family. First, it's only a few victims were willing to admit to being victim of domestic sexual violence. Sometimes the victim uh, deny that uh, she or he is a victim. And not only the victim, but also the family deny. It never happened to our family like that. It never, uh, we, we put it as a, as a domestic issue. 
you don't need to intervention. That's also uh, because we are not the individual uh, individual uh, uh, community. We are uh, more to become uh, uh, more socialist than another. And from the NGO stated, not, not many wives admitted that they experience sexual domestic violence. So they, they keep it silence. They uh, keep it from, from themselves and accept it as a part of a, their duty as a good, as a kind, as a sweet wife. And based on the interview, many wives who were victim of violence by their husband chose to divorce. This is also uh, a bit difficult in criminal justice system when uh, the advocate or uh, uh, the people who need to help you to get justice and you thought that it will be better if, uh, we, if I reconcile or uh, 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 give uh, uh, another chance to my uh, partner instead of divorce. Uh, instead of seeking criminal prosecution by reporting uh, the act of the husband to the police, even when they did, they were not sure that they would find justice. So there is a lack of trust, trustee from the victim to the criminal law institution, from, uh, to the criminal justice institution in Indonesia, because they thought that uh, it, I will be in trouble if I speak to the police and I will be in trouble with the, uh, with the perpetrator and the family and the society, they will, be, uh, they will bl blame me because I have my weakness or because I reported uh, my domestic uh, issues, my do domestic uh, secret to the public like that. And they, not, uh, they also not really sure that the judges give the uh, proportional, get the get a professional uh, sanction to the perpetrator. And then not really sure also about how the criminal justice system will treat them. The following is an excerpt from the interview with the sources. Uh, the, the, the resource person uh, said that sexual violence against wives is generally not reported by criminal prosecution as the wife usually prefer the, the, uh, do the divorce or separation is not uh, legal. Uh, a legal divorce because there is no uh, official document from the court. So in the div uh, divorce suite, it is stated that one of the reason is because the wife was experiencing sexual violence. A, a quick way to escape violence, and this is what women, uh, many women do, is through divorce. But again, there is also uh, an issue in Indonesia about uh, tackle or handle uh, domestic violence and violence against human, uh, against women with uh, restorative justice. So in several cases, I think there is a misconception or misleading or uh, so like, like malpractice, how to use the restorative uh, justice mechanism in the, in the domestic violence uh, cases. And the third, uh, in contrast to violence perpetrated against children and domestic servants, violence by house, uh, husband against wife and, uh, and vice versa is complaint offenses. The other consider this quiet uh, influence because my, uh, by changing the nature of an ordinary offense into the complaint offense, uh, the criminal process can only be carried out if there is a complaint from a certain person. So it, that will be limited the criteria for the person who report uh, the, the crime is allowed by the file a complaint under the provisions of the law. If we see uh, the cycle in this situation, uh, the cycle uh, could happen uh, in any circumstances, in any country, in any culture, uh, become the, uh, the difficult uh, situation for the supporting person and also for the uh, uh, advocate to uh, fight for the rights of the victim. If they say that uh, I'm okay with this situation, I will accept it. I will not ask for divorce. I will not um, go to the trial because uh, my parents will blame uh, so many things to me and I don't have enough money 
to uh, to provide uh, my children. That's also the reason why they keep uh, staying in the severe condition. In a way, even though I uh, explained to you uh, a sad story and uh, severe factual cases, there is also success story. I mean, it's not a, a real success story, but there is also uh, access uh, to justice for victims in a domestic violence and uh, violence against human. Uh, I just show you the uh, obstacle, the challenging for Indonesia. Besides the uh, good sto uh, sad story, we also have a, a good story when uh, in the case of Central Jakarta, I told you before, uh, there is the need uh, for the uh, uh, local institution and also the, the court to uh, give uh, proper protection and uh, punishment to the perpetrator and help. Uh, the girl uh, to continue their life under the supervision of the government. So that is also the responsibility for government to protect uh, the community, the, the people, the citizen. In Indonesia, we have uh, victim rights based on the anti-domestic uh, violence law. Uh, the victim shall be entitled and not uh, only that, uh, we, we also have uh, uh, the law on protection of a witness and victim uh, with the similar rights for the victim. The victim shall be entitled to get protection of the family, uh, police, district attorney offices, then the, the other stakeholder. On the ruling on protection instruction of a court, health service in accordance with medical need, special handling related to confidentiality of the victim. So uh, their data also get protected and counterparting by social workers. So there is a synergy uh, coordination and also cooperation among the, uh, among the stakeholders. And the last one is spiritual guidance service. Since uh, the victim also need a, a spiritual guidance service because it's part of the uh, healing for themselves. Dr. Bukhari, how many times uh, shall I have? We, we have exceeded uh, our time now. Uh, okay, thank you. If you will be quick, it's great. It, it will be great. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bukhari. And I will continue about victim protection. And not only uh, give protection uh, under the criminal code, uh, under the uh, uh, material uh, law, but also in uh, procedural law. So we have both. Uh, and I will show you the victim of the criminal justice system, how the interrelation, the interconnection uh, between uh, these two, the victim and the criminal justice system. Uh, uh, there is a there is a duty uh, from the from the victim, from the advocate, and also for for the prosecutor to uh, to give bring evidence uh, by the result of the fix, uh, fisum at repertum and also the fis, fisum uh, at psychiatry. three, okay. not only for the body but also from the uh, mental condition. Uh, of the of the victim, and uh, furthermore, if you look at the types and typology of victim in the entire verdict analysis, it is found that all victims were individual victims, who are included the type of talent victims. In Indonesia, we also recognize the aggravating if you uh, repeatedly committed a crime or become recidive, and there is also a uh, aggravating condition, a getting sanction, if you did it to the uh, uh, very young victim, and if you did it uh, uh, to, uh, and make cause of the, uh, the, uh, the death of the victim. And so we also uh, uh, adopted the aggravating uh, sanction for the perpetrator who, who, who did the severe act. And we found out that there is a back breakthrough from the criminal process in Indonesia. Uh, from, uh, we call it as a progressive justice uh, from the evidence and other things regarding to how, how uh, they treat the victim. We, we, we are now uh, have the uh, 
uh, police, uh, women police, have a competence to deal with their domestic violence and violence against the issue. Uh, and also the prosecutor and uh, special judges. We have a, a, a Supreme Court uh, regulation to protect uh, the victim, uh, uh, especially the victim who, who, who is a female victim. And how about how, how the situation of domestic violence and violence against women during the pandemic? Uh, it is raised, it is as an unspeakable crime. Uh, an increase uh, in, the, in Indonesia, uh, in Jakarta, and the Legal Aid Foundation of the Indonesian Women Association for Justice, uh, they have received uh, 1, 000, more than 1,000 reports of violence against women and children in 2020, because in, in the March 2020 is, the, is uh, the lockdown situation for Indonesia, and uh, the, the government also applied, uh, they have policy to uh, make it uh, semi-lockdown and also lockdown uh, time to time with the change. And a spike from to, uh, 794 reported cases uh, from 2019, so it's uh, rising uh, cases. Um, uh, domestic violence made up the largest uh, share of the case with 418 cases. Uh, it's really a uh, a, a, a very severe condition uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and the problems with the criminal justice system uh, could be lack of possibility to the online report, uh, especially for, uh, if the, the victims and their family, they have no access, uh, data, internet uh, on the region and limitation of techism in the hospital and provide uh, evidence to the, uh, through the trial, uh, limitation uh, to take visum in the hospital because it's a, uh, it's a limitation for patient who come to the hospital, the priority will be the patient of COVID-19 who influenced by COVID-19 with the, uh, uh, with the uh, very, very severe condition. And we also recognize the case priority uh, for online trial, uh, I think the the corrupt, uh, corruption uh, case, the anti -money, uh, the money laundering case, will be the top of priority to be uh, uh, joined the uh, online trial, or it, there will be limited access to the video conference trial. And now we have the bill on anti sexual violence law, and we see that the the urgency of uh, this special law. Uh, I will not explain about it uh, more further because uh, because of the time the limitation of our, our time, and I will share uh, my PowerPoint uh, to you. And uh, how is the uh, connection between uh, the situation in Indonesia uh, to the Istanbul Convention? I think uh, there is a need for Indonesia to ratify and adopt the Istanbul Convention, especially uh, start from the definition. Uh, it will be extend the victim pro uh, protection as a progressive uh, measures. And also uh, we need to uh, say no to the restorative mechanism, restorative justice mechanism to handle cases because it uh, applied wrongly in the, in the uh, criminal justice system. I think that's all my presentation. Thank you very much. We shall continue with uh, question and answer. Thank you, Dr. Buhari. I will stop share. Thank you, Ms. Natalina Naibaho for that great presentation and detailed information uh, about the situation in the Indonesia. And we can get the questions on the, the chat board and uh, after you write your questions, I will uh, read the questions for the recording. Is there any question? from anybody? Everything is understood very well by your great presentation, Natalina Naiba. I appreciate you. Hopefully. Okay, one. But we have one, I think. Uh, okay, I'm writing the question of Mehmet Utku Savari. 
thank you very much for uh, enlightening presentation. You mentioned that victims of the domestic violence uh, violence uh, incidents having troubles to apply the authorities for the criminal process, and for example, instead of uh, instead of complaint for the crimes, they tend to choose divorce from the perpetrators. Is there any new legal uh, studies to deal with this kind of problems? For instance, increasing the trust of the victims to the judicial system in Indonesia. In your opinion, what legal arrangements can be done to solve this problem? All right, I will directly respond to the uh, question, uh, Dr. Buhari. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Utku Safari for the question and the confirmation about my presentation. The lack of uh, trust, uh, or uh, the very low, low uh, feeling of trust from the victim of uh, domestic violence and violence against women to the uh, criminal justice uh, uh, or to the law enforcement officer is because uh, their lack of competence to handle, uh, to discuss, or uh, to give the, the, the proper uh, to give satis uh, satisfaction uh, decision to the victim. From now on, we already uh, change uh, first the paradigm of the law enforcement uh, officer by give them uh, so many training to open their mind, to open maybe uh, their uh, lack of uh, lack of uh, empathy to the victim of domestic violence and also for uh, the uh, violence. Uh, 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 for the women is because they uh, the, the family or their parents raised them up in the patriarchy condition. That's why give them background and how they treat uh, the victims in their profession. And from now on, the Supreme Court, the the the, the police, uh, uh, the, the police of the Republic of Indonesia, and also the 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 official uh, uh, the official training center of the. Uh, prosecutor uh, already give them cap capacity, capability to handle with empathy with the women perspective, and they also raising awareness from the uh, from the the grassroots from the women who really vulnerable to the situation, difficult situation of domestic violence to give them uh, 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 the brave heart to give them support and to have a commitment to be with them until uh, uh, the finished uh, line of the criminal justice uh, system. That become uh, 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 the breakthrough for the uh, criminal justice system in Indonesia to give more uh, justice to all the victims and their families. So it's not only uh, give the, the, the competence to the law enforcement officer, we will also uh, ask for the participation from the community mm -hmm. to help the victim and also raising awareness about this situation. And we already have the bill I told you uh, before on uh, anti-sexual violence, and hopefully it will be uh, established in this year as a priority of the country, of the Indonesian government under uh, President Jokowi. Uh, that's my response. Mr. Mahmoud, thank you. Thank you, Natalina, for your answer. Uh, and if there is no more question, uh, we will end uh, this session. Uh, we have uh, already exceeded uh, our time, uh, previewed time for this session. So we have five minutes uh, to start the second one uh, and uh, we can make a uh, five minute break uh, before uh, the second session. So uh, see you at uh, 14, uh, 15. Again, thank you, Dr. Buhari and all particip participants for their attention. And hopefully if you have a question, you can uh, send me email. Thank you so much. And good luck with the summer course.